Good afternoon, Mr. President. It is a pleasure speaking to you here from Washington. Welcome to AYV. Thank you very much. Um, it, it's been cold for me. This is my first time witnessing winter um, in the United States. How has it been, you know, coming to the call, attending this meeting? What the importance for um, the people of Sierra Leone for you attending this summit? Well, of course, the whole of Africa, African leaders are here, and uh, naturally uh, we have to come to be a part of it. Although sometimes in Sierra Leone they say I travel a lot, it is because where other leaders are, I am supposed to be there too, to represent my country. Um, as cold as it is, we have to put up with the inconveniences just to make sure that Sierra Leone is part of the world. You've had a very busy three days um, down here in Washington. Um, what's your assessment of this summit so far? Did it meet your expectations, the meetings you, you've attended? It was meant for us to discuss at the level of heads of state um, the emerging gulf between Africa and the United States. And I think the meetings were very productive. The response of the United States has been that we recognize that we have drifted apart. We were great partners in the past, but we have drifted apart. And that is not good for our relations. It's not good for development on both, both sides of the Atlantic. And we need to re reset. And that is what I think we have done. Uh, we've had very productive discussions uh, around that and how we can use this uh, new relationship for the mutual benefit of our uh, two uh, 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 of our countries, United States and the rest of African countries. So I think um, 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 we have a lot of reasons to be optimistic, and um, it was it was it was um, 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 done in a very uh, good atmosphere of frankness, and uh, African leaders were given the opportunity to say what they think about the state of relationship and how we can better that relationship for the mutual benefit of our people. You had a great opening at the Africa Diaspora Youth Summit. Um, Senator Gregory Mix um, um, introduced you and there was applause in, in, in the hall. And you spoke about youth, the importance in investing in youth while you showcase your investment in education as well. But one thing you mentioned is about um, supporting entrepreneurs, small businesses in, in the continent. You challenge other African leaders to do that. Back home, um, business people complain about access to credit, um, high interest rates and all of that. How can that be interpreted back in Sierra Leone? Well, we continue to make the effort. Um, the youths are definitely not only present now. We want them to be part of what we are doing, and that is why we bring in a lot of young people in governance. But they are the future. I am not going to be here forever as head of state. I am going to go at a certain point, as you know, um, the time detects, and would expect more competent young men and women to have uh, reached that maturity to come here and do better than what we are doing. I will not have a legacy if I do not have a competent young man or woman, as the case might be, to take my place. So we have to prepare them. And um, talking about having access to uh, um, affordable and uh, reasonable financing, uh, um, we have found it a little difficult. We have to work with the private sector to make sure that our young people who want to venture into doing businesses have access because you can have the, 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 the most brilliant idea, but if you don't have the money to get started, it will only be a dream forever. Mm. And um, why we are encouraging this is because we know that however hard we, we work as government, we cannot employ all of them. So being able to venture into, into business, employing themselves and many others is um, a way of employing these people uh, to, to cope uh, with um, the unemployment rate that, uh, that is going on on the continent as a whole. 
And it's also part of this small business is also from part of uh, the revenue creation that we need. Uh, they will help to propel the, the economic uh, progress that we want to make. So there are so many reasons why we really need to empower the youth. Uh, it's not easy mm -hmm. because uh, providing that uh, finance means you have to be able to do it uh, in such a way that they can afford it, it is readily available, and uh, so that they can, but the, 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 you know, the, the young people are always very daring. Uh, they are smart, they can take risk, but because they, uh, we are also educating them, they can take calculated risk. And you need a lot of these people to be able to move the economy. So I was speaking on behalf of them, encouraging them not to despair, but also um, saying that we as government should actually open the access to finance and other things for them to be able to embark on entrepreneurship. And you had a very huge applause when you, when you spoke about empowering youth in that all. But Mr. President, President Biden announced um, more than 15 billion in uh, trade and new deals um, you know, with the continent. Mm -hmm. What are you taking back home? What are we getting from this? Of course, uh, normally when these uh, things are announced, it is left with you now to go and uh, create your own structures, programs and projects that we tap into that. Um, uh, I hope nobody thinks I'm taking a billion <laughs> or 500 million before somebody <laughs> asks me next week, uh, uh, where's the money you brought from the United States? Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> they, they are in form, in form of projects, programs that we will have to tap into. Um, already, uh, they're encouraging American businesses to mm -hmm. do business in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. We have some of them mm -hmm. there already. And uh, we had lowering tributes to the sort of uh, climate, business climate we have provided for them. And that is to encourage more American businesses to go into Sierra Leone, set up, you know, and do business. So um, that in itself is uh, a clear indication that the United States is willing and ready for us to reset our relationship. You met with um, the CEO of um, Rockefeller Foundation and also uh, Variant, they signed an MOU with uh, the Minister of Health um, yesterday. Um, had this part of the, the um, sidelines of the meeting, some of the things you've taken back home to the people of Sierra Leone, the expectations as well? Yes, uh, the other one, Variant, is about the um, um, a cancer uh, treatment uh, diagnosis, treatment, uh, and management center mm. that they want to put there. Uh, it will be, it's a huge investment so that uh, we can, uh, we, we have a center in West Africa where we can treat cancer. Uh, of course, you know what that means. Mm. We send most of our people mm. out to Ghana, Senegal, and other countries. A lot of medical tourism is going on in that direction. We want to be able also to, uh, to, to use this facility to bring people and, of course, treat our people, mm. uh, 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 provide the medical services we require in-country. That, that is one. Rockefeller are interested in um, uh, supporting green um, um, energy transitions. Uh, they are looking at uh, helping us reduce the tariff for mini-grids in the regions. So we are working in that direction. These are all the many things I'm talking about. Um, after two, maybe a few hours, we will sit down as a group before we get back to Sierra Leone here to recap and uh, debrief on all of these meetings and what to, to, to identify the, take, uh, the takeaways from this and how we are going to lash onto those opportunities using um, um, various agencies of government. So that meeting is taking place soon after. You met with President Biden, and um, you know, back home, I follow social media, and there's been this, this sharing of your photos in the Oval Office, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of discussion and buzz around it. Uh, but you, you, you tweeted that you discussed a lot of things around economic development and strengthening the partnership between both countries. Mm -hmm. But one of the things you also discussed with President Biden is about democracy mm -hmm. and elections. W what, what are his concerns, and what's your own commitment to my commitments are always the same. I've been committed to democracy since I was a young military officer, and I'm even more committed now as a Democrat myself, a civilian leadership, democratically elected to, to lead my people. 
I think it is the best form of governance where the people decide who leads. But, you know, my contribution to democracy in Sierra Leone has not only been uh, bringing back democracy, but to make sure that the freedoms that should go with democracy, as you are aware of the seditious libel law, you are aware of the death penalty we have removed, and the many things we are doing to open up the space so that if, should you decide tomorrow to contest against me, you have the space. I'm not thinking now. Uh, don't even think about it, <laughs> because I'm going to beat your hands down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you, you're chair of the Committee of Ten on, on reforms of, of the um, UN Security Council. And President Biden, you know, declared the U.S. government support to the African Union so, um, um, being a member of the um, uh, G7 and also the government supporting a reform in the UN Security Council for a permanent seat for Africa. Does that make your work easy? Well, that is the biggest takeaway. Um, we've been campaigning the continent of Africa, the common African position. Um, many leaders have led the c Under my leadership, the United States has committed itself to that reform. This is historical, and um, we are going to now work to work the mechanics of making sure that um, Africa is represented. That historical injustice I've been talking about is taken care of. So that is a big takeaway from this, you know, the, 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 the um, uh, United States committing itself to the fact that, yes, Africa is supposed to have a seat okay. on, the, on the Security Council. The, 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 the other issue I want to ask you about, um, Mr. President, is issue of security and debt relief. Uh, um, Senator, um, um, for Secretary Blinken spoke to journalists yesterday and he spoke about the importance of working with African government in pushing for debt relief to the Paris Club and other areas. Uh, what, what, what actually is Africa asking for? We have, we have a, lot of, a lot of foreign debt. <clears throat> um, well, besides the foreign debt, we have quite a lot of debt. And what that does is every month that we get revenue, instead of attending to the social needs of the people, let's say uh, health, education, we use a huge amount of work together to, to take care of our debt body. We are groaning under, under the weight of the debt, and it has reduced the fiscal margin. What is left at the end of the day, by the time we pay salaries and our debt, uh, uh, debt obligations, we take care of our debt obligations, it is such that we have very little left to take care of the people. And so we are saying that this in itself is threatening democracy. Because as you, as you know, um, you will be the first to jump as journalists if the hospital is going bad. Uh, but <laughs> we have to make sure that we have enough resources to put into those hospitals, to, to plow into our educational system that we are so committed to. That only happens when we have enough revenue. As it is now, we in Sierra Leone put up to 80% of our, you know, when we collect what is left is less than 15% of our revenue. That is where we share among all our obligations, social obligations, taking, making sure that the people live, you know, um, if not decent, but acceptable uh, a standard of life. So it is quite tough. So we are saying to them, that with all what is happening, with the, um, the, the, the dollar rising against mm. all other major currencies, including ours, which was already weak, mm. you know what mm. has happened mm. in the past few months. Mm. Not that we are not, we have taken every measure available to us, but yet still, we cannot match the dollar. So those are threatening. It will, will we appear to the people as if we are not um, handling the economy very well. But we are so helpless in the face of this global uh, 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 tragedy that is affecting. So <clears throat> what that means is that um, if they can give us debt relief, we are even proposing in Sierra Leone mm. that whatever we get from that, we will use everything not for other infrastructure or other things, but to take care of the needs of the people because we are going through extraordinary difficult times, mm. and therefore 
the people should be comforted. They sh you know, as a compassionate government, we should make sure that there's food, there's health, and uh, other issues. This, the kids are going to school. Finally, Mr. President, you met with Madeleine Albright, the head of the MCC. And Alice. Uh, Alice Albright, I'm sorry, the head of the MCC. Um, what's the commitment or what's the hopes of Sierra Leone getting the compact next year? We are working on the compact. We already have it. Mm -hmm. But normally uh, uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of bureaucracy or administrative processes mm -hmm. involved before it actually comes to that implementation, mm -hmm. which comes after June next year. Mm -hmm. So, but the many issues, the many processes involved are what we are taking care of since mm -hmm. The time it was announced, mm. I think over a little over a year, uh, maybe over a year now. Yeah, it is. So we've been working through all of those processes. But we met to discuss the fact that uh, it's, uh, the progress is satisfactory and that there are no uh, issues of concern. And that come uh, June, July next year, we will have um, a grant that we will plow into energy and agriculture because those are from the binding constraints analysis that they have done, those are the areas that we need to invest to be able to, to reap the best benefit. And you are very hopeful of getting that money? <clears throat> it's already gotten. Mm -hmm. What we need, we, we only that to really get it uh, you know, into, into the country, there are so many processes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to, to give away 350 million or above, no interest, you have to make sure certain things are in place. You have to make sure that it is, uh, there, is, uh, there, there is a proper arrangement as to where that money is going, how it's going to be applied, and those are the things that we are doing. Okay. That money is already ours. Uh, we are making Great sure that we, uh, it lands in a very comfortable zone and it's used for the benefit of the average already. On a lighter note, you did return free return in the middle of Christmas. Maybe mm. I force a little bit anyways. Mm. What's in a message to the people of Selyon, your Christmas message, your near message? Um, back home presently, there's this issue about fuel scarcity and all of it. What, what message do you have for them? Uh, since you spend your Christmas now, Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> Thank you. you, uh, <laughs> you uh, and uh, you're lucky you're spending it on this part of the world. Um, we have issues already with, um, and this is not di uh, different from what we've been talking, you know. Um, the dollar, we have to cater for the dollars every month to buy the quantum of uh, uh, fear that we need to run all, everything in Sierra Leone. Um, with the rise in, in, in the value of the dollar as against the, the Leone, um, it's been extremely difficult to get the supplies in as and when we require it. Um, of course, uh, the, the Honorable Vice President and the rest of my team are there and they are working on that. Um, we want to make sure that Sierra Leoneans can have um, a good Christmas. And uh, in advance, I wish every Sierra Leonean a, a happy Christmas. Um, and we are doing our best to make sure we provide them with whatever we can to make them comfortable. Merry Christmas to Sierra Leone and uh, a wish of uh, uh, a happy new year to all of them. Merry Christmas in advance, Mr. President. Thank you. It is a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.